Alhamdulillahi wahdah Wassalatu wassalam ala man la nabiyya ba'dah Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil islami wa sunnah All praise and thanks belong to Allah For guiding us to Islam And for guiding us to the sunnah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has blessed us And that he has given us the opportunity To live to see another Ramadan it is incumbent that we take full advantage of the month of Ramadan and that we strive our utmost to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the most excellent of manners inside of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan throughout the whole of our lives that we strive to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most excellent of manners. Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has written upon us this tremendous act of ibadah, this tremendous act of worship, this act of fasting. This ibadah, like other acts of worship, it is incumbent that we know what is the general definition for worship so that we may strive and excel as relates to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general, but specifically as relates to as-siyam, specifically as relates to fasting. Allah Azza wa Jal, He has blessed us with the siyam. Allah ta'ala, He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. That all you who believe, fasting has been written upon you, as it was written upon those who came before you, so that you may attain taqwa. The fasting has been written upon you, as it was written upon those who came before you, so that you could attain taqwa, so that you could attain piety. And bila shak wa bila raib, those who are pious, those who are upon taqwa, then these will be the ones who will benefit. These will be the ones who they will benefit and they will be the successful. Whereas those who are lacking of this quality, then you find these will be the ones who will be miserable. These will be the ones who will be disgraced. These will be the ones who would have found no benefit from the time in which they spent upon earth. These will be the ones who would have found no benefit for their life span and for what they had achieved inside of their life. So thus, we have to be of those who take full advantage of our lives. We have to be of those who take full advantage of the opportunity. We have to be of those who take full advantage of the blessings in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has bestowed upon us. So with that being the case, ya ibad, we have to take seriously and earnestly to the acts of worship in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has written upon us. Naam, we have to take seriously and earnestly to those acts of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has written upon us. So let us look now and let us reflect on what is the definition of fasting? What is the definition of, excuse me, what is the definition of worship? Ma'am, how is worship defined so that we may understand better? The ulama they explain, al-ibadah, hiya ismun jami'un. لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من الأقوال والأعمال الباطنة والظاهرة 
that worship, it is a very comprehensive term and it includes and it encompasses everything that Allah loves and that is pleased with from actions, from statements, from actions, those that are hidden and those that are apparent, those that are hidden and those that are apparent, those that are external and those that are internal to phrase it in another manner. So with that being the case, we should also know that worship, it has two it has two conditions in order for it to be accepted that worship it has two conditions in order for it to be accepted and i want us to reflect upon these conditions as relates to worship in general but in particularly as relates to the fast those conditions firstly they are al-ikhlas. The first of these two conditions, then it is ikhlas. That we have to be sincere unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haythu la shirka fiha. To the point where there is no shirk. There is no shirk that is mixed with our ibadah. Naam? Right. Also, what is the second condition, which is essential in order for our worship to be accepted, it is al mutabi'ah al mutabi'ah to the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, haythu la bid'ah ma'aha, that we have to follow the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and our ibadah has to be in accordance to his sunnah, such as there is no innovation that is connected to it. There is no bid'ah that is connected to it. Naam. So now let us reflect upon this sincerity and let us reflect upon being in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as relates to siyam. As Allah ta'ala, he says, Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum that fasting has been written upon you as it was written upon those who came before you. In order that you attain taqwa, so that you can be from those who are pious. Naam. Let us reflect on a reality. Because when it comes to fasting, and this is what I challenge myself and everyone to ask themselves as it relates to it. Are you of those who truly establish the fast? Meaning, are we of those who truly strive to establish the fast in every which shape and form those who strive to establish the fast as fast as such as they're not only staying away from that which is haram but they are staying away from that which is haram in general meaning they are not this just staying away from that which Allah Ta'ala has told them to stay away from during the duration of the fast, but they're staying away from the muharramat in general. They're staying away from the sins in general. Are we of those who stay away from the sins? And are we of those who stay away from the sins publicly and privately? Are we of those who stay away from the sins when we are alone? And likewise, when we are out or in the presence of others? It is incumbent that we, that we look and that we reflect. And that we utilize the fast as a training ground to acclimate ourselves to this outstanding behavior of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public and in private. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are around others and when we are alone by ourselves. Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every situation. It is incumbent, if we truly want to be of those who are successful, that this be our characteristic and that we don't rely upon just the mere action itself, just the mere bringing of the action itself and to think that that is sufficient. But we have to also internally, we have to also internally 
bring forth those internal aspects that are necessary and needed in order to worship Allah upon the most excellent of manners. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he tells us a reality about a people. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Anna aqwaman yatuna yawm al qiyama." That there will be a people and they will come on the day of judgment. That there will be a people and they will come upon the day of judgment. Naam. Bi a'malin. That they will come with actions. Bi da'a azima. Ka amthali jibali tihama. That they will come with actions on the day of judgment that are tremendous. Naam. Yani good, wholesome, goodly deeds that are tremendous. So much so that they are like inside the, the, the mountain of tihama. Naam, they are like the mountain of Tihama. From what? No salah. From salah. From zakah. Was zakah. Wa siyam. Wa sadaqa. Wa hajj. Wa birr. Wa wasl. Wa ghayri thalika. Min umur al khayr. That they will come on the day of judgment. And they will have great tremendous amount of, of, of salah. Of prayer. A great and tremendous amount of of zakah, of charity, a great tremendous amount of siyam, of fasting, a great tremendous amount of sadaqah, a great tremendous amount of, 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 of yani, the voluntary charity, a great tremendous amount of hajj, a great tremendous amount of being good and wholesome and goodly to one's parents, a great tremendous amount of keeping the ties of kin and kinship. Naam. And other than that, from the good deeds, إِلَيْهَا And Allah will look at their deeds and what they have done. And then He will make it as scattered dust particles. He will make it like scattered dust particles. فَقَالَ أَصْحَابَ وَجِنِينَ So the companions, they said, يعني, and this was striking to them, this was terrifying to them. So they said, Men ha'ula? Men yakun ha'ula? Who will be these people? Who will be these people that come and they have a great massive amounts of good deeds? And then it will be made like scattered pieces of dust particles. They said, who are these people? Who would they be? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, he said, Amma innahum laminkum. He said, it is as such as that they are from you. يَقُولُونَ بِمِثْلِ قَوْلِكُمْ They speak with the likes of your statements. وَيَعْمَلُونَ بِمِثْلِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ And they work and they do de and they do deeds, the likes of your deeds. Naam, I want us to listen to this now. I really want us to listen to this. Especially the Muslims in, our, in this day and time from the younger generation. And even oh, from the older generation, those who have been plagued with having a problem when it comes to establishing their religion, with having difficulties when it comes to practicing their religion, those Muslims who are struggling, half in, half out, so on and so forth. Ma'am, I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention. Because it is not about just the frame of a thing it is not about just the outward appearance of a thing but it's about the reality of a thing and whether or not we are meeting the reality of what is necessary for these acts of worship for the siyam for the salah so on and so forth when we pray do we bring the reality of the prayer or are we just going through the mechanics and bringing the outward appearance of it when we fast are we establishing the reality of the fast or are we just going through the outward mechanics of it and establishing the appearance of it Naam, because we want to establish the reality of ibadah, not the appearance of ibadah. If we want to be successful, then we have to establish the reality of ibadah and not the appearance of ibadah. Naam. And we have to be of those who abandon and leave off evil openly and inwardly publicly and privately those who are upon good publicly privately openly inwardly 
on the outside and on the inside. Now, let's go back to these individuals. These individuals who they brought forth the mechanics, they brought forth the apparent the the appearance of righteousness, righteous good deeds, but their reality was lacking. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Amma an, amma inna hum la minkum." He said, "Is it not such that they are from you, meaning from the Muslims?" And they say what you say. They have similar statements. And they do what you do. They have similar actions. Now, apparently, maybe we're talking about on the outside. Right. But they are people. But they are people who, if they are alone in private, with that which Allah has made prohibited, with the haram, when they're alone with the haram, and tahakuha, they embark upon it. When they are alone with the haram, they do it. They fall into it. As Sheikh Raslan, Taala, he mentions, Wayhak, woe unto you. Alaysa alayka min shaheed, woe unto you. Don't you know that you have one who is a witness over you? Woe unto you. Wayhak, don't you know that you have one who is a witness over you? Alaysa alayka min raqib, don't you know that you have one who is ever vigilant, ever watching you? Don't you know that you are under constant surveillance? Naam, we are all under constant surveillance. Naam, everything that we do, everything that we say, naam, is being watched. We're under constant surveillance. We're being watched, we're being looked at, we're being listened to. Naam. And it is incumbent that we understand and we realize this, especially as it relates to the establishment of the ibadah, especially as it relates to staying away from the haram. Naam. So the question then therefore has to come when we're fasting. Is it as such that we are staying away from that which is halal outside of the fast? So we're staying away from food which is halal outside the fast. We're staying away from drink, which is halal outside the fast. We're staying away from relations with the spouse, which is halal outside the fast. So we're staying away from that, which is halal outside of this time of the year, but yet we are embarking upon things that are haram all year round. Those things that are haram in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. Those things that are forbidden in Ramadan and outside Ramadan. Those things that are forbidden when you're fasting and when you're not fasting. Those things that are haram. So are we staying away from food and drink but yet embarking upon things that are haram? Because if not in Ramadan, then when? If we're not going to leave off these sinful behavior that we're doing. If, we, if we're not going to leave it off in Ramadan, when are you going to stop doing it? If you're not going to stop in Ramadan, when are you going to stop? If you're not going to stop smoking in Ramadan, when are you going to stop smoking? If you're not going to stop yani, speaking in the most foul and disrespectful of manners and using all types of foul language, if you're not going to stop using foul language in Ramadan, when are you going to stop using foul language? Now, and this is a perfect opportunity. This is a perfect excuse for you to get yourself together. This is a perfect excuse for you to get yourself together. Yeah, it is incumbent, it is a must that we realize that if we want to establish the fast in reality, then we have to recognize the fact that we are constantly being watched. We have to recognize the fact that we are constantly under surveillance. We have to recognize the fact that we are commanded to fear Allah wherever we may be, whether you're in the innermost portion of your house or you're in the middle of a stadium surrounded by hundreds of thousands of people, or anything in between or above those two, you have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are alone with the maharim of Allah, when you are alone in a situation where you have the opportunity to do the haram, remember this hadith of these individuals who will come on the day of judgment and they will have much action like the, like the size of a mountain like the size of a mountain 
from fasting, from salah, from prayer, from giving the obligatory charity and the voluntary charity, from making hajj, so on and so forth, and it will all be dispersed. It will all go away. It will all be dispersed. It will all turn into dust. It will all go away. Why? Because when they are alone with the haram, they embark upon it. When they are alone with the haram, they can't control themselves. When they are alone with the haram, they do it. It is incumbent and it is a must that we acclimate and train ourselves to stay away from the haram because we are under a state of surveillance. Naam, wayhak. The Shaykh says, Woe unto you. Woe unto you. Don't you know that Allah sees you? Woe unto you. Don't you know that Allah sees you? Wayhak. Woe unto you. Ala ta'alam. Anna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Huwa sami' al basir. Wayhak. Woe unto you. Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the all hearing, He is the all seeing. Woe unto you. Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya'lamu khainat al ayun. That Allah ta'ala, He knows the he knows the, uh, what would you say? The deception of the eye. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows the deception of your eyes. When you're cutting your eyes in certain ways and so on and so forth. Naam, Allah ta'ala, he knows the deception of the eye. وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ And that which is inside of the chest, that was the chest it tries to hide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what is in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what you are thinking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows what you're trying to hide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows your secrets and that which is even more secret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows everything. Wayhak, alam ta'lam bi anna Allah yara. Wayhak, don't you know Allah sees you? You are always under a state of surveillance, Ya Abdullah. You are always under a state of surveillance, Ya Amatullah. You are always being watched. Always. Allah Rabbul Alameen. Yuridu min al a'mal haqa'iqaha. Allah Ta'ala, He wants from the actions their true reality. Haqa'iqaha. Their true reality. Not that you not that, that, that you just bring the mechanical yani appearance of an action but no but you bring the reality of the action because listen when we keep going back to the ayah kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum la'allakum ish tattaqun that Allah Ta'ala says the fasting has been written upon you as it was written upon those who came before you for yani in order for you what in order for you what to attain piety Naam, to attain piety. So fasting is the road to piety. Now, staying away from sin in open and hidden. That's what? That's from piety. Naam, abandoning the haram when in open and in hidden. That's from what? That's from piety. Naam, not embarking upon the haram in open and hidden. That's from what? That's from piety. This is what fasting is for so that we can establish what? So that we can establish taqwa, stay away from the haram. Do that which Allah Ta'ala has commanded us to do. But that reality, it will not be established. It will not be established unless, unless what? Unless we understand that we are constantly being watched. So therefore, we bring forth actions that are conducive and suitable for one who realizes and recognizes that they are in that state. So therefore, they're going to perform the deeds in the most excellent of manners because they know Allah is watching. And at the top of this and at the beginning of this and the middle of this and the end of this is that what? Is that we have to establish an ikhlas. It has to be ikhlas. So that when we fast, we fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we stand in prayer, we stand in prayer for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we seek out later to Qadr, we seek it out later to Qadr and, and, and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therein. Sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because it will be said about us that we were fast from those who fasted or from those who prayed or those who yani, was in the masjid that whole night or whatever the case is or that it was yani, striving hard in the last 10 days and things of this nature. No, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith that is sahih, the sahihain, 
حديث متفق عليه من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever fast before that من قام رمضان نعم whoever stands the night of رمضان they pray in رمضان من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever stands in رمضان prays the night of رمضان out of what إيمان out of Iman and anticipation of the reward. Out of Iman and in anticipation of the reward. Then what? Then their previous sins will be forgiven. Then their previous sins will be forgiven. They're praying out of Iman, out of faith, out of true faith. And they're anticipating the reward from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not worrying about how the reputation could be enhanced and take advantage of this situation. No, they're not worrying about that. They're not worrying about how people's opinion could be shaped and molded yani, to their benefits yani, due to this. No, they're not worrying about that. They're not worrying about the people's praise, nor are they worrying about the people's scorn. They're doing it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. anhu. رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه that whoever fast Ramadan out of Iman and an anticipation of the reward then they will have their previous sins forgiven whoever fast Ramadan out of Iman and anticipation of the reward, then they will have their previous sins forgiven. Naam. So again, they are fasting because they are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are fasting because they are seeking the reward. They're seeking to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not fasting for any type of alternative reason. They're not fasting because they want their family to have a good opinion of them or the friends to have a good opinion of them or the Muslims in the community to have a good opinion of them, so on and so forth. No, they are fasting for what? Sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking the reward from Allah jalla wa ala. This is why they are fasting. Naam. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ ثم قال النبي صلى الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he goes on to say in the same hadith من قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه and whoever stands the night of قدر out of إيمان and anticipation of the reward then they will have their previous sins forgiven whoever stands the night of قدر out of Iman out of true faith and an anticipation of the reward, then they will have their previous sins forgiven. Ya ibadullah. We have to realize and understand that Tawheed must be established. Being compliant to the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, this must be established. We have to realize that we have to bring the acts of worship upon the reality. Not just establishing the outward appearance of it and the mere mechanics of it. But it has its reality. Naam? Because ibadah without reality naam, from ikhlas, from mutaba'ah, from taqwa, so on and so forth. If we have ibadah and it's devoid of these things, it's like a body that has no soul. Ma'am, we have brought the physical structure there, but it has no soul. It has no soul. Ma'am, so we, so we, so I mean, like a body with no soul. A body with no soul is what? It's dead. A body that is devoid of a soul, it is dead. Ma'am, so it is incumbent upon us. That we bring the reality, that we just don't bring the body of 
said worship. We just don't bring the outward appearance of said worship, but rather that we bring yani, the reality of that worship. Ma'am, so a person when they're fasting, they're, they're, they're affected, their day is affected by their fast. Their day is affected by their fast. Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Let us examine the day. Let us examine our day. How our day goes when we fast. Let me ask you this question. The day that you fast, is it the same as the day that you don't fast? If the answer is yes, then this is an indication that what? That you are not fasting properly. You're not bringing the reality of the fast. Because no doubt, although a Muslim will show restraint and great restraint, when they are not fasting, they have even more restraint when they are fasting. No matter how good a Muslim may be, wholesome, delightful, and the like, even more so when they're not fasting. No matter how much a Muslim will stay away from sins, even more so when they're fasting, they're even more vigilant in staying away from sins. Ma'am, because the fasting and the state of fasting is a state of perpetual training and self-control and discipline. Do you understand? It's a perpetual state of discipline. So if we are just as undisciplined while fasting as we are on those days that we are not fasting, then this is an indication that we are not bringing the reality of the fast. So the day that you're fasting, it should in no which way, shape, and form be the same as the day that you're not fasting. Sheikh Raslan, he says, Illa anna al-amr laysa ala zahirihi hakeza. He said, because the affair is not just upon the appearance like this, that you just bring what is apparent from the affair, and then that's it, you're good. La. Wa inna ma liman qama qiyaman sahihan. That it is really for the one who they stand up at night correctly in reality. They stand up at night in reality. Now, not that they stand in there. Not just that they're there, they, 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 they show up. No, but that they're, they're, they're standing. They have khushur. Let's use the, yeah, this as an example. They have khushur. So they are mindfulness. They, 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 they have, they're humble when they're praying. They're, yeah, they're not, their mind is not wandering when they're praying. They're not neglectful what they're saying, so on and so forth. When they make rukur, they are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they're in sujood, they are striving. They are they are striving. They are excelling in begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplicating unto Allah. Praising Allah. Asking Allah. Asking Allah. Begging Allah. Asking Allah. So on and so forth. This is how their night prayer is filled. Ma'am, with striving to draw near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every one of us knows ourselves. Ask yourself, how does you how is your sujood inside of Taraweeh? How is your sujood inside of Qiyamul Layl? How is your sujood inside of the five daily prayers? Are you excelling and making dua unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you asking Allah for what you need, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so on and so forth? What is the status of your sujood? How does your sujood look? How healthy is it? Naam. Likewise with the fast. وَصَامَ صِيَامًا صَحِيحًا And they fast a true fast. They fast a fast that is a fast in reality. Not only are they staying away from food and drink and relation with one spouse, but they're also staying away from that which is haram. So they're lowering their gaze. They're not gazing upon that which is haram. They're protecting their ears, so they're not listening to that which is haram. Naam, they're protecting their tongue, so they're not speaking with that which is haram. They're not using foul language and speaking filthy talk and so on and so forth. Naam. They are restricting their limbs, so they're doing that which is correct. So it is not just about bringing the shell 
of an act of worship, but it's about bringing the reality of that act of worship. Muhtasiban amalahu lillah rabbil alameen because they are anticipation of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are anticipation of the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore what he does, yani muhtasiban sa'yahu wa qasdahu limaradillah so they are anticipating from their actions and from their acts of devotion and from their striving and from that which they intend, their sincerity. They are seeking after that which is pleasing unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they do what they do, they're doing it because they're seeking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhtasiban tarukahu wa kaffahu imtina'ahu uh, and thus they are anticipating by leaving off what they leave off and from withholding from what they withhold their anticipation of that is so that they are not prevented their anticipation of that excuse me is so that they can draw near so that they can draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they withhold, when they when they prevent themselves from doing something and they stop yani, from embarking upon haram and so on and so forth, all of that is for what? To draw near unto Allah. To draw near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who they have embodied this, this is how they are. لِمَنْ كَانَ كَذَلِكَ فَلَهُ ذَلِكَ Whoever who's like that, then that's what he's going to get. Whoever's like that, they're fasting out of iman, anticipation of the reward, so on and so forth, and they're bringing the reality of the fast, the reality of their prayer, the reality of their of, of their charity, so on and so forth. Then this is the one who will be rewarded. This is the one who they will bring forth these acts of good deeds, Yomul Qiyama, and they will remain. They won't disappear. They won't be turned into scattered dust. The one who stays away from the haram in public and in private then these are the ones with their deeds that will remain they won't be like scattered dust those who have self-control openly and inwardly those who have self-control publicly and privately these are the ones who will be successful so it is incumbent and it is a must that when we fast we fast and we understand that we are being watched when we fast we fast and we fast for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we fast we fast we fast upon the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yaqbal min al-amal illa ma kana khalisan. Allah ta'ala, he does not accept from action except that which is sincere. Khalisan sawaba. That which is sincerely for him and in accordance to the sunnah of his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything else is not acceptable. Anything else is not acceptable. What does Allah ta'ala an yanfa'ni wa iyaakum bima sami'na وأن يجعله حجة لنا ولا علينا وأن يجعلنا مباركا حيث ما كنا وأن يجعلنا من من إذا أعطي شكر وضبط لي الصبر وإذا أذنب استغفر فإن هؤلاء ثلاث عنوان السعادة هذا يا عباد إلى اللقاء استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته